The original vision I had that started all this was that I went on a vision quest kind of with a Kabbalistic Jewish mystical rabbi hmm. who took us to these ruins next to the Wailing Wall which is the main Jewish holy spot in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and we were supposed to ask for a vision so I asked for some help with my relationship problems at the moment of course yeah. <laughs> and the wall didn't want to help me with that the yeah. wall said this was about 20 something years ago that I was meant to do something to heal the rifts between the world's religions in that region. Wow. And uh, that was such a powerful vision. And I kept saying, well, I don't think so. I think you got the wrong person. <laughs> you just tell me, how do I make my relationship better? You know? yeah. <laughs> so that sort of motivated me. And then synchronistically enough, about a year later, I flew to Israel to work on a general's son who was in a coma. Hmm. And somebody called me and they said, I want you to do some Palestinian Israeli facilitation. And I said, I don't even really want to talk to you today. I'm really exhausted from all this homework. I'm going to the beach. And this person came to the beach and they were so motivated, they swam out to me in the ocean with their dress on. Oh my goodness. And I said, If you're that motivated, let's go to work. Right. So they said, We want you to come tonight to Haifa to a Palestinian Israeli friendship center and facilitate a group process. Mm -hmm. We've heard about your work. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'll be there. So that was the beginning. That was about 17 years ago. Wow, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Do you, when you travel and do the work in, in the world, in Israel and other places, uh, then when you come back to the institute here in Portland and mm -hmm. teach, how do you find that 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 imp it impacts your teaching or, or mm -hmm. how, you know, how does, yeah. Well, a couple different things. One is it teaches me a lot about extreme conflict. And so I teach, I tend to teach a lot here about extreme conflict, but not only that, one of my big interests is taking process work and making it very hands-on and very practical. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I was one of the founders of the Rivers Way Training Clinic here. Mm -hmm. right. I want the students here in their internship to take all this incredible theoretical stuff we teach and all, and get get right into it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And not and at a, and I'm a very grassroots level person. Uh, I want this work taken into everybody. When I was in graduate school, they said, um, this work we're teaching is very good for educated, middle class, whatever, and I just always resisted that. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I went and started a clinic in a rural area where, they, where there was no mental health services. Mm -hmm. So I have this vision of very grassroots, very practical application of process work. Wow. So I think that's one of the things that it does for me when I come back here is I teach a lot how to actually, whatever I'm teaching, get how to really get out there and get your hands on mm. and make a difference. Mm. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I know that about you. You are you are really in the trenches in every way or in the real world, I guess <laughs> yeah, you should I like say. That. I don't know if that's the trenches. And I'm very dreamy too, which is right. interesting. I'm a very right. dreamy person. and. Right. And so I'm trying to always put those worlds together. I was just telling somebody when I heard the Dalai Lama this year, he was so inspiring. Mm. Because he, I'd, I'd heard him before and all he talked about was meditate. Uh -huh. But this time the Dalai Lama said, <clears throat> meditate's good but not enough the way the world is. Get up and do something. Incredible. I wow. was so stunned. He said, wow. get up and get something done. Make a change in the world and meditate. Did you say, Dalai Lama, let's do a group together? <laughs> Would you like to come? Would you like to do something in the world together? together? But uh, it was so inspiring. So for me, that's the other thing is that, for example, world work moments for me have a very mystical quality to them. Yeah. It's And I want to help heal, heal that split between uh -huh. social action and healing the world and inner work meditation and mysticism. They're actually the same and they feed each other. So I was just thinking if I was uh, someone that had not heard of process work and I heard that you you, you use the word extreme conflict before I might be maybe I would be really open to extreme conflict maybe I would be really nervous about it but uh, if when you teach um, 
How do you help people into the idea of working with extreme conflict? Well, one of the things mm -hmm. is if you're exposed to extreme conflict, then everything else seems pretty mild. Mm. So I can help people often have perspective yeah. that this isn't really so scary. Yeah. But the other thing is that um, it, process work has methods that work at every level. And so it's just a training. Mm -hmm. And also it's like running. You don't start running 10 miles. You might start by running a quarter of a mile and then walking. Mm -hmm. So it's a training. You get mm -hmm. used to things. But you never know when extreme conflict will occur. One of the students in, that, in the conflict work program was just telling me that they, try, that they were walking on the street here and came upon a, an extreme conflict. Wow. Yeah. Right here in Portland, yeah. of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody was saying something politically that was very controversial, mm -hmm. and they made uh, someone else uh, so angry that they almost hit them. Hmm. And she tried to do something. Hmm. And so that's the point. You never know. In a way, our families often have very extreme conflict, hmm. where there's very little listening, and you know. And so I want people to know to get comfortable with. Now, by extreme conflict, I don't mean put yourself in danger. I just mean be mm -hmm. able to sit with people who are extremely polarized, mm -hmm. whether that's your, your, your mother and your father, or yourself and your partner, or part of your, your work scene and another part, mm, that's or your city or your yeah. country. Be comfortable you, a little bit with that. Do you find when you do larger group conflicts that people uh, their family issues become really important. Yeah, yeah. I one of my favorite moments was I was working in a little Arab village in uh, Israel, doing Arab Israeli, which is Palestinian also, but the Palestinians who live in Israel and Israeli conflict. And at one point, the Arab Israeli man got up and he said, uh, "This is all very good. Now, can you help me deal with my wife when I go home?" <laughs> And I thought, that's so important, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And Arnie Mandel has said so many times, I remember at World Work in Denver, somebody said, what can we do about this terrible conflict in the Middle East? And he said, work on it in your family. Mm -hmm. So Incredible. I think it's an, a wonderful idea of process work that the inner work that you do affects the world. Every little thing you do has a potentially positive or negative impact on the world, mm -hmm. right? Incredible. Not, I don't expect everybody to go sit with me in Betjala. You know, Betjala, in the Mideast, there's about a three-block area that's a neutral zone. Hmm. And it's the only area people from both sides can come to. Uh -huh. And it's safe. There's never been, as far as I know, it's like, it's an amazing thing for both sides to create a place where both people can come safely and work on things. Wow. And so, but I don't expect everybody to come there, but I would like people to be a little bit more comfortable with addressing something in their family or at work or in their mm -hmm. church or synagogue or mosque.